Today I'm going to show you how I bottle the wine after using the fast ferment. Now everything is being sanitized right now that I'm going to use and I'm going to show you right now just how I sanitize the bottles. This is what's called bottle tree. I sort out the bottles I'm going to use and put them on the tree. And when I, my bottles are already clean, so all I have to do is sanitize them. I clean them and put them away. And I take my one's time to sanitize. When I put them away, I put them away upside down so nothing can get inside them. So they're all clean and ready to go. And when I when I bottle wine, I will, at least the first time I do it, make some dry, some semi-sweet, and some sweet, just to see what it's like. To see if maybe I like it differently than what people normally have it at. Um, so what I do is I have three different types of bottles. This type right here, I, I put my dries in. And then I chose these clear ones for my semi-sweets, then these ones right here for my sweets. So what you do is that this is a bottle washer, I guess you would call it. And what it I have a sanitizing solution in there, and you just pump it, and it just gets the whole bottle in there. So I go through and I do that, and then just stick them down here on the bottom. Just give it like three pumps, tilting it to make sure that it goes all over. And it goes rather fast. You want to use some kind of sanitizing solution. I use potassium metabisulfite solution in water. And what I do is I'll let them sit for at least 15 minutes, which typically is minimal. A lot of times it'll be more. And I don't rinse them. I just use them right after I sanitize. And I did all these other ones already. I just wanted to show you how I how this works. Okay. So bottles are all sanitized. That's sitting. So the next step for me to do is to get the fast ferment ready for um, bottling. And I'll do that in a little while because I want these to sit. I've already got the, the wine to where I want it for my dries. Uh, the previous video I did, I back sweetened it up to a zero bricks, which is what I like for dry. Some of you might want something drier than that, but that's what I tend to like for dry. So, that will be the next step. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we got to take the lid off so we don't suck all the fluid that's in the airlock into the wine. Plus, we're going to need to get in there to back sweeten if you're going to so desire to back sweeten, which I will. And what I'm going to do for now is I'm just going to leave that sitting right there. And then we want to come down to the collection ball, shut that off. And then we got to put something underneath that collection ball. Because there is going to be some wine coming out, or coming out from there. So I'm going to get the pan that I am planning on mixing the honey in with the wine in. That rinsed off and dried. <clears throat> and what you're going to have to do, you're going to want to loosen this first, okay, just a little bit, just so it doesn't leak. And I put it up on the collection ball itself and take it all the way down. You might have to wiggle it, yeah, because it's sealed pretty good. I don't know if you saw that, but it kind of squirted a little bit. And I put this over here, and you can either totally dump it, or what I do is I like to reuse it. I don't like to waste anything. I mean, I like to save as much of the wine as I can. Maybe I'm cheap, maybe I'm being wise. Uh, that's for you to decide, but it's just the way I do it. I don't like to waste stuff that I spend time working on it. So 
So I use a turkey baster, or it looks like a turkey baster, I guess it's made for doing wine, it has little markings on it so you know. What you're working with, I'll take that out of here. And I gotta be able to see where the sediment line is. It's right here. So I kinda try to gauge how deep I can go. It's gonna be to the half ounce mark out of here. Careful. You get a bunch of wine out of there. That's going to be clear. If you get any sediment, do not use it. You don't want sediment. So I want to be right about there. Yeah, it gets a little messy, but to me it's worth it. I keep looking at it, making sure there's no sediment. As long as it's running clear, you're okay. Keep measuring so I don't go too far. Getting pretty close to the sediment, so I will leave it at that. Rinse this off. We may want to take some more out of the sediment just for a little sample. Doesn't hurt. Get some more sanitizer in there. Okay, so we'll leave this aside for now. I'm not going to need that. So now we have to connect the bottling uh, fitting, which is this one right here. It's got the barbed end here to put the hose on. And that screws right on here. And make sure when you took off the collection ball that the O-ring is still on the bottom of this. It's pretty important to have the O-ring on there. We'll make a mess if you don't. Okay. Then I got the hose. The 3 8 hose. And I connect the bottle filler. Right now it's just a tube. I took the end off so when I sanitize I can sanitize it inside and out. So I put that in the end of that. And then we got to get this bottom to it. Make sure it's free. The one thing I failed to mention with the stuff that's being sanitized is corks. Corks got to be sanitized before you put them in. So we got those in there, and what we're going to do is once the bottle's full, we're going to bring it to the corker, cork it, and fill the next one, and so on and so forth. And what I do too, which I forgot to do, is lay out a towel to put the bottles on. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to rinse them off and then stick them in a different area to dry off the cell. So now, make sure that's open. Get it filled. You know, depending on the bottom of your bottle will determine how well this uh, bottle filler works. Because if it's one of those bottoms with a really high crown inside of it, it's really hard to do it in there. 
I recommend against using those bottles because they're kind of a pain. But use what you want. So put the cork in, press the bottom, put the bottle in, press it down. You may need to adjust the setting. So see that? Flush or just dimpled is perfect. That's what you want. I rinse it off. Put it over here. Then do the next one. And so on and so forth. And once I get all 12 of these filled for my dry, then I will back sweeten to get to the semi sweet level, which my semi sweets will be 1.5. So from the initial SG reading of 0.990, if, if I mentioned it in the last video, I brought up the 0.998 for my dry, which is just a little bit below zero. And now what I want to do is go eight more, for lack of a better explanation. So then I got to try to figure, or do the math, and figure out what I got to do to get to that point. So it took one and a quarter cups of honey to get from 990 to 998. Now to get to 99 from 998. Let me just show you. I don't know if we can read that or not, but 998 is like right there. So you got 0 0.990, then 1.0. So one mark below 1.0 is 998. And I want to go three marks above 1.0 because if you spin it around, it'll come over to here to the brick scale, which there's zero. And then there's all these hash marks, which each hash is like a half. So half, one, half, two, up to five. And I want to go one and a half. So that's three hash marks down from zero. And zero is one on the brick scale. So I want to go three hash marks up from there. So that will be four hash marks or whatever you want to call them. So I don't want to use another one and a quarter cups of honey because I don't have a full six gallon batch. So what I gotta do is figure out, okay, 12 bottles, you guess. Typically you get 30 bottles. So 12 bottles is two fifths of this I'm gonna be taking out. So I gotta take two fifths less of what I use. So two fifths is a half a cup. Because I used a cup and a quarter, which is five quarters, minus two quarters, which is three quarters. So I'm going to use three quarters of a cup to mix in to the remaining amount to get to my next level. So that's how I figure that. Okay, so now I have filled my 12 bottles with my dry. I've got them dried off and put in a case and put aside. So now it's time for the semi-sweet. So now I got to raise the, raise the bricks up to 1.5 for my semi-sweet. Semi-sweet starts at 1.5, so I go on the low scale. So I've taken my three quarters of a cup of honey and already added it to the wine that I took off the collection ball. So now I'm gonna cook it until it gets incorporated into the, into the wine, making sure I do not overcook it. And I wanna cook it just enough so that it melts into the wine. Not so that it boils or gets so hot I can't put my hand on it. I don't want the flame real high. It takes a little bit of time for three quarters of a cup of honey to get incorporated. Stirring all the time, trying to keep it from you know, burning or boiling. Keep my hand on the side to make sure it doesn't get too hot. And constantly watching to see if it's incorporated in. I mean, typically when you stir, even with the red wines, you know, when it gets thin enough, you can see whether it's incorporated in or not. 
you see a distinction? Okay, it's still kind of warm and not hot, so I'm going to cook it a little more. Not that I want it hot, but I want it hot enough so that it incorporates. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in the, in the fast ferment. I want to remove that. The other thing to look at as far as trying to figure out how much to use is how much you went down. So I started, it was at the 23 liter, and now it's at the, just above the 13 liter. So I used 10 liters, not quite half. So less than two thirds, about three and a half gallons. I was at six. So if you do the math on six gallons for one and a quarter cups, I got I got to get the calculator out for that. But I'm going to stick with the three quarter and see how it works. As long as I don't over sweeten it, we're good. If I over sweeten it, there's nothing I can do about it. You cannot make it less sweet. You can only make it sweeter. So pour it in nice and easy. Try not to incorporate any more air than you absolutely have to. Okay. I want to get my drill and the mixer. And remember from the previous videos, you want to go three minutes. So I'm looking at the clock to see what I got for three minutes. You want to go three minutes because if you do not mix enough, you're going to get a false reading. And I had that happen when I first was making wine. And you want to mix it fast enough, but not just so fast that you incorporate air into it. So I'm nearing my three minute mark and what I did is after the first minute I switched direction on the drill. After the second minute I switched it back. And then I'll go probably another 30 seconds on this and then we will check the bricks level and see if we're at the spot I want to be at. And the other thing I did too, once I finished the 12 bottles of dry I had on one of the bottles for the semi-sweet and I put it in the barrel and I shut the hose off so nothing will come out and just stuck the bottle filler in there just to keep it safe and clean. Alright, so that hopefully will do it. We'll take this off and rinse it off for now because we're going to need it again at least once more. Put that back in here for now. Now we got to take the temperature or check the bricks. Auto siphon, my test tube, and my triple scale height. Okay, so now we're gonna see where I landed. So I get my wine thief and I get my test tube ready. Stick it down in there and fill it up good. Make sure there's enough wine in the test tube. Oh, that'll be plenty. Okay. Eat this off. Stick it back in the sanitizer for later use. The triple scale hydrometer. Put it in, give it a spin. And we're hoping for 1.5. We are at uh, one. So I didn't quite get where I want or wanted to be. So for the three quarters of a cup of honey, I got up. Three marks instead of four, so I might need to put one more quarter cup of honey in there. But before I do that, this is what you always want to do. You want to sample it. 
because maybe it's good the way it's at. So we'll get our sampling glass, pour a little bit in there. I'm going to do another quarter cup so it's a noticeable difference between dry and semi-sweet. So we take the stuff that we have in the test tube, pour it in the pan, set the test tube aside. We don't necessarily have to clean that out every time. So then I want to get a quarter cup and put that, fill that with honey and stick that in. I will Okay, now I've finished my semi-sweet. I uh, had to actually add a cup of honey to bring it up to 1.5. Now, for me to do the sweet, I gotta do the math. Again, so we're still figuring, assuming there's 30 bottles. I've gotten 24, so I got six left. So we'll say that when I started semi-sweet, there was 18 bottles in here and I took two thirds of them out. So I need one third of what I just added to bring it up another one and a half, which is what I brought it up. So that's another one third of a cup of honey. So that's what I'm gonna add, or what I've added to the juice, or to the wine, to be able to mix in and try to get a three. Now, one thing I wanna make note of here before I forget is Depending on the type of corks you use will determine how you need to store your bottles. If you use natural cork, you need to leave them in an upright position for three days while they just seal the top of the bottle. And then you need to store them laying horizontally. If you use neoprene like I do, you can do whatever you want to right away. They seal immediately, you can lay them down, you can stand them up, you can always leave them standing up, whatever you want to do. That's why I like the neoprene. The difference is in how quick your wine will age. It'll age quicker with the natural cork because that allows small amounts of air in much quicker than the neoprene does, which it does, but it's very minute amounts. So that's the major difference with that, but eh, my wine doesn't age that long before I drink it. Anyhow, I try to keep a bottle from every batch for three years. That's a struggle. So. Do what you want with that and now i'm going to mix and make my sweet now i've done my sweetening <clears throat> and i forgot one thing when i sweetened to the semi-sweet i did more than go from zero to one and a half i was a little bit below zero so my calculations were a little bit off so i wound it up with a 3.5 instead of a three now i tasted it and it tastes good so it's not a big issue now the other thing i want to mention is bottle shot. So once you finish bottling, it's best to let your bottle sit for two weeks to a month. I usually let it go a month before you even open one. The longer it sits, the better, but don't open it before it sits a month, just so you don't get any issues with bottle shock. Now I'm gonna finish filling these bottles, clean everything up, and I'm done. And I hope that you all enjoyed these videos on how to make wine from a kit. And that your wine comes out just as delicious as mine has and just have a great time.